Hi everyone, this is Dave from Pandora Prime Recon, and today I have something a little bit different for you. Uh, it's not Warhammer 40k related, but it is Warhammer related. So this is Sabretooth Games' Warcry CCG for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And Sabretooth created this game just as they were finishing the first Warhammer 40,000 CCG. So I got my hands on a number of booster packs because I was kind of interested in this game and, you know, learning it and seeing what kind of cards are out there because I am a big fan of Games Workshop stuff and I'm a big, you know, 40k Warhammer fluff nerd. So even if I didn't play a lot of fantasy, I still read up on the army books and tried to learn all the lore. And so Warhammer Fantasy is, is a big, big thing for me as well. Um, so I just want to try and learn this game. And this video is hopefully an introduction to you guys to, to see what this game is all about as well because there isn't a lot about this game. There's not a lot of info or other videos or websites. So here's kind of like a little bit of a time capsule into a game that was made in 2003. So the way this game works, I'll just move the booster packs out of the way. I will be opening these though. The way this game works is that you and your opponent each have two 30 card decks. This is the army deck and this is the action deck. And the game consists of three turns where I'm just gonna try and play this pretend, play a pretend game. So each turn you have a gold total um, from which you can use to spend on cards. As you can see here, you're gonna be playing most of these cards um, from your army deck when you deploy before a battle. So you can see they've got gold costs. So you know, there are two areas where you can play your cards. So you can play them in your battle line, which is your front line here. And here's kind of where your front line units will defend against kind of your more vulnerable back line units. So the back line is the reserve line. So Ideally, you want kind of like your um, your supporting units, your your artillery, your range, your arch archers, range units. You want them to be at the back line. Um, so a typical battle line will look like this, and a typical um, reserve line will look like this. So you'll be deploying in this formation. Your opponent will also be deploying in this formation, and this is how you kind of lay out your cards and play the game. So after you've deployed. Um, you, deploy, you draw a command hand, not a command hand, sorry, I'm too used to working on 40k CCG, but you draw um, a hand from your action deck. So action cards are kind of like your tactics, um, your kind of tricks and strategies that you use to sway the battle in your favor when you fight. And when you fight, it's essentially, um, depending on who's the attacker or who's the defender, you try and pit your units one-on-one. -on -one. So um, without getting too much into details, you, let's say, you pick your frontline unit here, and then you choose one of their units to take the brunt of the attack. And there are three types of units in this game. There are infantry, there are cavalry, and there's flyers. And these are the kind of the three speeds of the game. So cavalry can block infantry or infantry attacks, and cavalry or flyers can block cavalry attacks. Um, and that's kind of how you try and dictate the flow of the games to make sure that you have an enough blocking units to make sure that, you know, your opponent can't destroy what it wants or try and attack what he wants. So that's the basic gist of the game. Each unit has their own statistics and there's leadership tests and there's route checks and um, certain mechanics in the game where, you know, if you destroy a unit, you have a chance to follow up and try and, you know, press the advance and, and charge into another unit. So there's a bunch of cool mechanics that are pretty reminiscent of Warhammer Fantasy. Um, so that's kind of the gist of the game. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open some packs and hopefully talk a little bit about it, the game. As I understand it, you know, I am um, by no means an expert. I'm trying to learn the game myself still, but hopefully I get the rules right when I'm talking about some of these cards. Alrighty, so here's the first pack. You can see um, the back of each pack tells you what's in it. So I believe out of the nine playable cards, you have one rare, two, two uncommons, and the rest are commons. And it also talks about a gold piece. I'll talk about that when I, when I get to it. So the first cards are the commons. So we have an action card. We have, uh, I believe this is a Dark Elf Cavalry card. Uh, it's probably Dark Riders. Um, and you can see the, the border kind of denotes uh, what side your, your unit is on. So you're usually, playing either the Grand Alliance, which is, you know, Empire, Bretonia, High Elves, etc., etc., and then the Hordes of Darkness, which is, you know, the Warriors of Chaos, Dark Elves, and the Greenskins. This is Dark Elf, Dark Rider. 
got a ogre here or troll. I guess it's an ogre, but it's huge. So you can see the gold cost is seven. Most gold costs that I've seen range between three and six. So this is a super expensive card. Very, very strong. Most fighting units probably range between, I don't know, three and six strength. So strength helps you determine who wins the fight between two different units. So at, at the end of the whole process, after you play all your tricks, um, you, you and your opponent roll off the top of your deck. Um, you can see with the action cards have die rolls. And so if you have the higher strength, you destroy their unit and you have a chance to, you know, do a sweeping advance and press, it, press the attack. So this is a very, very big unit. Um, it's got a little um, ability here called victory. So victory is at the end of all the fights after everyone's fought and you've no, no you, neither you or nor your opponent have, has anyone left to fight with. Then you try and figure out who is the winner of that overall battle each turn by tallying up the strength. And so that's kind of the downside of this unit is that while he's very, very strong, he gives you a minus eight tier total when you determine who the winner is. So he can be um, quite a detriment. So you got another action card, and you can see they've got die rolls here, so whenever you need to make a test, there are lots of tests in this game, like for example, leadership tests, just as in Warhammer Fantasy, um, you roll off the top of your action deck. So you got more Chaos cards, I believe they got uh, Chaos Marauders, it's pretty cool. So Scout is a cool ability, um, which helps you take the first turn, because to determine who is the attacker in each turn, um, you tally up the number of tactic points in for each of your units. So again, I mentioned gold cost and strength. Tactics determines how many, you know, tactics cards you can play um, when this unit is fighting, um, but it is also used for determining who the attacker and defender are in each turn. So a scout is ability where normally for determining the first, the person who takes the first action, you add these up while for each unit in your back line, but this adds to your total in the front line. So he adds four to that total while he's in the front line for determining who the attacker is. Got first Empire card, Battle Halt Swordsman. This is our first uncommon, Eleron's Everwatch. Second uncommon is an action card. And our rare is going to be Karlberg Greatswords. It's called Empire Unit. So again, it's kind of the opposite of the Ogre Unit where he actually adds to the victory total at the end of a battle. Um, as a reaction, so like in the 40k CCG, there are also, also reactions and tactics in this game. And so after you play a tactic that gives us a strength bonus, he gets another one strength, so kind of amplifies all of your, your strength boosting tactics, which is actually a pretty cool ability. Um, you can really like really boost the strength to high numbers and has got decent, uh, you know, uh, tactics value. So you can play more tactic cards with this card. That's pretty cool. Oh wow, so this is a 100 gold card. Um, so this is kind of a redemption system for, for the Warcry game, similar to the 40k CCG, where you, each booster pack has one of these from a, a range, I think it's from 10 to 100. I had only seen 50 until this point, but I guess there are hundreds. And then you add these up and you, send, you mail them away, and then you can order um, promo cards on their website, on Sabretooth Games' website. Too bad this is defunct, maybe I'll try um, sending in some cards. Maybe someone will respond to me, but... Um, it's kind of a cool collector's item. Let's open our next pack. So we've got some more action cards. So the green border of the action card means it's neutral. So I believe there are both action cards and unit cards that have the green border and are neutral. Um, so unless they otherwise say, um, then action cards like these can be played by either side either the, the Alliance or the Horde. Got dwarf units. Empire ranged unit. Action card. So this is an example of an attachment. An attachment has a gold cost um, and it provides a bonus to a unit um, when you deploy it on a unit during your muster phase, which is essentially your deployment phase before you fight. Got some more. Chaos Marauders, I believe. So pretty vanilla unit, but also pretty good stuff. Oh, there are fours all the, all the way across the board. So this is a vanilla unit, but it's got pretty solid statistics and solid leadership value. So leadership value helps you avoid um, getting routed in case you're, if you lose a battle, you, 
your the attacking unit gets to roll, and if they roll higher than the defeated unit's leadership, then they get to do a follow-up attack. So high leadership helps prevent that. Got another action card. Got some orcs here. A rare. It's a Twilight Company, so they're a dark elf unit. So it's got pretty cheap gold cost, pretty low strength, medium to high tactics value, decent leadership. So War Cry is a tactic that has to be used as its first tactic when it fights. Um, otherwise, you can't use it. But when you do use it, then you get to basically copy any combat tactic on any un enemy unit that they have. So that's pretty cool. That's a rare. So I've got two starter decks from a little while back. So I'm hoping some of these cards will help upgrade the decks I have. Mounts so is another attachment. Some Chaos Warriors here. I really like the Chaos art. See Adrian Smith, it's the illustrator. So Adrian Smith is a very, very well-known Games Workshop illustrator. An action card. Some more Dark Elf Riders. Arrow Boys. Cool, so these look like uh, Silver Helms to me. Some High Elves. It's a pretty cool looking tactic. That's merch. That's a pretty funny dwarf. Looks pretty angry. And a rare Sword of Destiny. This sounds very epic. So it's got a one gold cost attachment. It doesn't provide any stats, but it does have a combat tactic. So there's two kinds of tactics in this game. Combat tactics only work if it's actually in the fight, in the one-on-one -on -one fight. Support tactics only work if the unit is outside the fight and help, can help support the, the, the fighting unit. So it makes sense. So when it's fighting, uh, the unit it's wielding is fighting, you look at the top three cards of your enemy's action deck and replace them in any order. So you basically, you can rig your opponent's rolls because you have to make a roll at the end of, you know, after you play all your tactics during, during that phase and you see who the winner is, you have to roll off the top of your deck. So you can basically rig your opponent to lose that fight. That's kind of cool. Two more packs here. I always seem to have trouble with one of these packs, but there we go. All right. Got some Kyle of Archers. It's pretty cool artwork by Paul Dainton, another really well-known Games Workshop painter. Phoenix Guard. I think these guys are really cool. Um, so they have a combat tactic where it only works if all of your units have been used up for the battle, but he gets plus three strength, which raises strength to a whopping eight, which is pretty good for pretty good for an infantry unit. It's illustrated by Doug Schuler. Doug Schuler is one of the original um, Magic the Gathering artists. Um, the quality of this piece specifically is slightly questionable. Um, I like some of his earlier work better. The Morzog's Mad Mob. Azerneth's Blood Pack. Got a Presti Advantage, a rare. Hasty Maneuver. So this is a, a rare tactic, and it costs three, so you need three tactic points to play it. Um, but as you can kind of hint, it gives a lot of strength, so let's see what the what, what it does. So as a combat tactic, so you discard a random card to give this unit plus four strength. Um, most tactics only give one or two that I've seen, a lot of the like the common and uncommon ones. So this is a really big boost um, to, to you, and it can really help you win a battle. Uh, the only downside is you have to discard a random card, which can be good or bad, depending on how good the rest of your hand is, and also has a one die roll, which is which can come up at, at inopportune times. But the four strength boost is, is quite strong. And... For our last pack. Hopefully I can get this. There we go. We can get a foil. Wouldn't mind a, a foil of air in this one. And that's a pretty cool Chaos Warrior illustration. This is plotting revenge. Yes, very Chaos-like. Another mounts. Another Azernet's Deathbringers. Man, Chaos Warriors look so cool. We got another action card. Yep, so we've seen this guy already. King Ulrich's Shield Bearers, cool dwarf unit. 
another recall dwarf illustration by Adrian Smith. And these guys are pretty hefty too. So five gold cost, which is a bit on the pricier side, but has six strength, which is really strong. So it's got a little, I guess, a, a drawback. After you attack with any other unit, commit this unit. So committing is basically tapping or locking. So it kind of incentivizes you to attack with this guy first. So you don't lose the chance to attack with him. And we got another pressy advantage, our rare Drax Breath. So it's pretty cheap, two cost, one so you can kind of tell that this unit is not meant to be fighting on the front lines, but it is a dwarf war machine, so it hopefully does something cool. So a support tactic, you can discard a card to give your unit plus one strength. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, because it can turn your useless cards into actually excess strength. Um, and yeah, so you want to try and keep this guy out of battle, because when he does, you can essentially give your, your other units free strength when they fight. So that's a pretty cool unit. So that's my last gold card. So yeah, so that's five packs of uh, Warhammer Fantasy Warcry. Hopefully I'll have more packs to open as I'll be you know trying to build these decks up and maybe try and get some test games playing. But uh, yeah, this is fun. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you next time.